Don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing the Line. We've got a story here today about New Zealand from The Guardian. And now, wokeism and the woke movement has finally taken over New Zealand. I think it's too far gone. This woke agenda is literally going to kill people and have people dying because they are pushing their woke nonsense. Now, this is only just in New Zealand, but this is starting to creep across the world. There will be coming to Australia sooner than later. And I guarantee you that if the, vo uh, the vote for the voice goes through here in Australia, we will be seeing very similar things, which won't affect me because that just means I'll get preferential treatment because I'm obviously a black fella, as you can tell. But here it is. New Zealand starts giving priority to Maori and Pacific elective surgery patients. Ethnicity is being used as a factor to determine wait lists in a bid to combat racial inequities in health outcomes. So basically, that means if you're a Maori or a Pacific Islander, you get put to the front of the queue for surgeries in New Zealand. Now, that will soon be coming to Australia if it hasn't already started already, and it will be marching its way across the ocean to America as well. If it hasn't already started happening in other countries, uh, New Zealand's going to be the guinea pig here, and we'll just see how it goes. Their new prime minister hasn't missed a beat. He hasn't uh, dropped the bat for Jacinda. He keeps the wokeness going in her, uh, in her wake. A new algorithm is used in New Zealand hospitals means Maori and Pacific patients for elective surgeries were pushed higher on waiting lists than those of other ethnicities with identical other factors like sickness, location, or time on a wait list. At this stage, it will only be applied to elective surgery and not emergencies. Well, that's good to know because if you went into a, an emergency department with a, I don't know, a star picket or a stick through your uh, guts, and uh, there was a Maori fella there who'd uh, uh, stubbed his toe, that uh, you might not um, get pushed to the back of the queue just because, you know, racism, you know. The tool is designed to address significant long-term inequality sorry, in New Zealand's health outcomes, which are sharply drawn along ethnic lines. Researchers found about half of all Maori deaths in Pacific people's deaths in New Zealand are potentially preventable. Now... That's got nothing to do with people on a waiting list. I'd say that's got something to do with their genetics. If you've ever met a Maori or Pacific Islander, they're quite a large frame person. If you're Maori or Pacific Islander, I'm sure that most of your family or a lot of your family or you, people that you know are a larger build of people. What I'm trying to say in a nice way is Maori's are fat as fuck and they're terrifyingly huge. I'm sure that's got something to do with it. There's a study here. Um, it was the annual health update for 2022 and 2023. Now, obesity was not measured. Sorry, 2021, 2022 was not measured due to COVID. But when you look at the last set of data that they had, uh, you see that 45% of adults in New Zealand are overweight. Now, I'm obviously overweight. So I'd be in that 45% if I was in New Zealand. I'm sure Australia's running along the same lines, maybe a bit less. I'm not too sure, maybe a bit more. But it's running along the same lines there. 45% of people are overweight. Also, smoking's still high. Uh, alcoholism's still high in New Zealand. Another trend that is uh, being pushed along with wokeness here is sexual orientation. Now, so here it says 94.2% of adults identified as hetero or straight, 2.0% uh, as gay or lesbian, 3.1% as bi, and 08 as another sexual identity in 2021 and 2022. More than 1 in 10, that's 11.1% of young people aged 15 to 24, now identify as bi, uh, as bisexual compared to the than compared with less than 1% of adults aged 45 years or older. So 15 to 24 year olds, 11.1% of them are now identifying as bisexual, where it was originally only 1%. I wonder if that's been caused by the social media and wokeism storm, 
or is it just, um, I don't know, maybe more of them are getting born, who knows? But I'd say it's got something to do with the whole trend of um, the LGBT propaganda and movement that's been creeping across the nation and creeping across the world. But we'll get back to our story here. The tool is designed to address significant long-term inequalities. Significant long-term inequalities in New Zealand due to ethnicity. Uh, New Zealand would have to be one of the least racist places on earth, and you're sitting there saying that they're dying because they're not white. While clinical, uh, clinical needs remains a primary consideration, four measures are also weighted to determine priority for elective surgeries, ethnicity, time spent on the wait list, geographic location, and deprave, uh, deprivation level. The tool called the Equity Adjuster, there we go, that's that magic word again, equity, uses a point scoring algorithm that weighs these factors differently depending on the surgery. Duncan Bliss, a surgical ser uh, services manager who was part of the team to develop the tool, said that in an interview with the newsroom, clinical needed Clinical need always takes precedence and the equity adjuster doesn't interfere with that. Oh, I'm sure it doesn't. A number of public health experts say that a shift is required to make up for inequalities faced by Maori and Pacific people at the other stages of the health system, including in being referred for surgeries and accessing medical help in the first place. If you're having issues giving Maori and Pacific Islanders uh, medical help and need. Maybe it's more along the location of where they live. I know my town where I live, it's a rural town. We have uh, a decent sized indigenous population and they are getting rid of everything in our hospital. You can't go there for a broken arm or a leg anymore. You can't give birth there. It's basically just a transfer station. We've had all these inequitable differences in health outcomes for decades, and it doesn't appear that we've been able to affect the changes that we want. Colin Tuckatonga, Associate Professor of Public Health at the University of Auckland. If you don't make these cora uh, courageous decisions, courageous, that's a word. Yeah, that's a courageous thing to do is push people down to the bottom of a list because of their race, because they're white. Like introducing a clint ethnic dimension to the decision making will never make the changes that we want to make in terms of health outcomes. This is just this is just blatant racism. If you have a patient that is needing medical care, the last thing you look at is their ethnicity. Are they male, female, are they old, young? It's triage. You if you go and treat the most sick and the most wounded that has the best chance to survive first. You don't just go and, oh, wait a minute, he's got a he's got a scratch on his shoulder and uh, he's missing a leg. Well, I'll go and fix the dude's scratch on his shoulder because he's Maori. Because that's what's going to happen when the voice comes in here in Australia. Anyone who's white or not indigenous or not Aboriginal will be pushed to the back burner. These things... Can you imagine if it was the other way around? Can you imagine if this was put the other way, that Maori people were put to the back of the list, no matter what was going on, if they um, if they were in desperate need of a surgery or something like that? Now, this might just be elective surgeries to start with, but do you know what elective surgery is? That's getting rid of a hernia or getting something fixed like that, you know? Like, I know someone who's been sitting on a wait list here in Australia for over 12 months now just to go and get a hernia replaced. Uh, hernia fixed i know someone that was sitting there for 18 months and then got pushed back again because of covid so they had to go and do it uh privately and pay an absolute fortune to go and get that done uh, the small surgery uh, i think they were in there for a day and they were 18 months it's insane i mean bringing race into it is nothing but disgusting and if you stand for this you are a racist and it is insane that they're pushing this and pretending that it's anything but racist. Can you imagine if it was the other way around? You changed the titles there. Maori people are put at the bottom of the list for surgeries because of their race and ethnicity. It's the same thing. New Zealand's lost it. New Zealand has voted their way into this predicament they're in now. They've been brainwashed by social media and this woke nonsense. Everything in New Zealand, you guys are paying so much for fuel, so much for food. I mean, how much are you guys paying for your power? I have a friend in New Zealand who's paying $400 a month nearly for power. 
That's insane. How the hell are you supposed to pay for these things? And then you go and go get your surgery, but you can't get your surgery because you're a white person. Such a pinnacle of humanitarianism New Zealand is, isn't it? They'll put you at the bottom of the list because of the color of your skin. And anyone who says anything else other than that's just racist is either lying to themselves, lying to you, or they are pushing this woke agenda for their own disgusting and despicable reasons. This is coming to Australia when the vote goes through, because I guarantee you it will go through because the government hasn't told us a thing about it. And the majority of the idiot people that live in this country and live in cities and just vote blindly because the government or the TV, Channel 7, Channel 9, ABC, SBS, whatever you want to say, mainstream media will just tell them to vote one way. Otherwise, you're being a racist, bigot or a homophobe. And they will do that because they just want to be a good person. They just want to be, I'm being part of the you know, part of the good side of history, you know, it's, no, it's, it's brainwashing. And at some certain point, you've got to be able to think for yourself. But we saw over the last couple of years that no one can think for themselves and they want big daddy government to baby them and bottle feed them and then just put them in a little safe space and keep them nice and toasty and warm. This is insanity. This is going to kill people because of their race and ethnicity. If you're white, if you're Caucasian, if you're anything other than indigenous to the countries that we're living in now, uh, you're screwed. I'll be fine. My dad's Aboriginal. I'm I'm fine. You know, I can tell he's Aboriginal because he's left. This is insanity. I don't even know. It's, just, it's mind-boggling. I know a friend who's waiting to go and get a surgery in New Zealand, and now he's going to be put at the bottom of the list because he's... Um, He's probably part Maori or something like that, but he's not going to be playing those games. He's not going to go and get DNA tested or whatever they have to do over there to prove it. But this is just the starting, uh, the start of it. And New Zealand seems to be taking the first bullet. I don't know. What do you guys think anyway? Let me know down in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.